Hey guys, this is part two of how to start a nitro engine and um, looks like this is probably going to be part two of three. So I promise I'm trying to be succinct about this, but these are at least what I feel are things that I know I would have liked to have learned when uh, starting a nitro engine for the first time. Okay. And so with that one out of the way, the next one I'm going to start up is the Ofna Hyper 7. This one has been a little bit more temperamental to start, um, typically in cold weather. So um, I'll talk in a second about a heat gun, um, but uh, you know it, it, it was to a point to where if the temperature were below, let's say, 70 degrees, it would be kind of hard to start. And if the temperature were below 60 degrees, it was very, very difficult to start. If it were below 50 degrees, it was pretty much impossible to start without heating up the engine. Today, here in Texas at this time, it's probably about 75, maybe 80 degrees. So hopefully I won't have a problem, but if I do, we'll walk through, once again, troubleshooting it. Now, I'm going to put some fuel in it. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Again, because I don't want to race these all evening. I don't want to run them all evening. I'm going to next prime it. How do we do that? Place your finger over the stinger. Make sure you place it very flush though, so there's no air coming out of it. And I'm going to prime. This one here needs to be primed a little bit more, I've learned once again, than others. So um, I'm going to probably give it about four pulls. Okay. Now we turn it on. Make sure everything's working fine. Put the igniter in. Check to make sure the igniter is making good contact. And we'll see. I'm not hoping for a lot because trust me, this is the one that's that's kind of difficult to turn on, but we'll see. Alright, so I can tell this one is gonna have a little bit of uh, trouble. Alright, so with that. Let's begin troubleshooting. The very first thing that I noticed was that the pull start was, was um, there wasn't much friction, if you will. It was very easy to pull. So that tells me that I'm losing a little bit of compression. I'm going to check the glow plug and make sure that it's, it's tight inside of the cooling head sink, okay? So because the tighter it is, the harder this is going to be to pull. All right, same thing. So we're having problems. At this point then, here's where you get into your, your heat gun. And you guys are going to be amazed at a difference that the heat gun makes. Now, to be honest with you, I, I could get this started without a heat gun. I don't want you guys thinking you need to have a heat gun to start it. Um, in fact, the other day, um, I started it on the second pull. Um, with um, without even using a heat gun. In fact, what I'm going to do is probably just give it one more little bit of prime just to see if that's not it. Let's try it one more time here. That's not it. So, now we add some heat to it. And when you're heating it, you just want to get um, around the, the the, the gaskets and get around the, the actual um, crankcase. A blow dryer will work just as well. First time I ever started this was, was I believe, right at freezing or below freezing temperatures. And I used a blow dryer on it and it started right up. I do like the heat gun just because it's a little bit hotter, but I promise it. In hindsight, you know, this cost me $15, but a blow dryer works just as good. One thing is, this is just a little bit hotter. That's all it is. So, we're going to give it some heat here. And I'm expecting this to actually make a world of difference. I'm also going to put a little bit more fuel in it. Just to make sure, because I, I did actually just put a very, very little bit of amount of it. I like to make sure that it is getting fuel to the carburetor. Alright, so we got it heated up. Turned on. 
without even priming it, I'll try it again and see what we get. If you couldn't hear me, I'm sorry. What I meant to say is, what an amazing difference heating your engine up. Makes. Next up is the Exceed Forza. And I can tell you now, this is, if I do have a problem child in the family, he is it. Uh, I do absolutely love this car because it's what I cut my teeth on. And it's taught me everything I need to know. In fact, I'm actually going to have a separate video on specifically how to start an Exceed Forza, um, but I will kind of walk through at least the basic steps here. The very first thing though I can recommend is you want to make sure that your um, carburetor is set to its closed position because the way that you pull this, it is so easy just to hit this little spring right here and open up the carburetor, and that's a very that's what happened to me when I broke my connecting rod on it. All right, so let's see what we got. Okay, so this car has not been started in probably ten days, and not just that, but I actually took it apart. I took apart the engine um, and all that good stuff, and I'm going to fill him up because I I do want to get him out running tonight. I want to drive him around a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, this is the difficult one to start, so we'll see how it goes. Especially that I made modifications to it, so we'll probably end up having a troubleshoot here. But I'm going to give it a little bit of prime. Now, glow plug, first turn it on. Put the glow plug in. This one has a, quite a bit of pinch to it, so. Whoop. See, that didn't work good. Glow plug's in. Oh, wow. Here we go. I guess I got lucky. It started, oh, oh, there we go. This is another thing to talk about. It started right up. But what you can see is, it's probably going to stop when I pull this out. Okay, so that's a whole other issue altogether than starting it, is when I take out the... Um, the glow plug on, on why it's uh, it's it's stopping and, and that has to do with the actual tuning of the engine itself. So um, let's take a look and, and see what we got going on there. So at this point, it's um, one of two things. Okay, it could, it could be a, well, I shouldn't say that. It, it's one of a few things. But the great part about starting a nitro engine is there is a finite number of uh, tasks. Uh, troubleshooting tasks that you can go through to actually get it started. However, if when you start it, um, it you know it it dies once you take out the um, the glow plug igniter, I would say it's either because the engine is running way too rich, or the glow plug itself is um, is in very bad shape. So this is when we get into checking out the glow plug. It's very simple. Take your T wrench. This came actually with the Exceed Forza. You put it in. And you turn it. Now, what I've learned the best thing to do is to kind of flip it to help get it out because there's a little washer that goes with it, which of course I did not get out. So my trusty needle nose pliers, always be careful and make sure that you get the little, uh, the shim, the washer that goes with the glow plug. Make sure that comes out as well. From here, it's a matter of getting your glow plug igniter and checking to make sure Ooh, and that thing is hot. It's smoking hot. Okay, so now we know it is not the glow plug. It's not the igniter. We put it back in and tighten it up. Now, it tells me that the engine is running way too rich. So, while this is not a, um, a video on how to tune your car, I do have one of those coming up. Um, what I am going to do...